Hi there, everybody. I'm just waiting for a couple more people to join from the uh, waiting room. Um, thank you all for um, being here today and for being on time. Uh, my name's Adam Charlton and I work in the recruitment department here at Richmond, the American International University in London. Um, today we have a virtual open day and we're going to be talking about our BA degree in fashion management and marketing and also our BA degree in just in marketing, our regular marketing degree. Um, I'm going to give a presentation to start with. It's going to be a general presentation about Richmond and it's going to take about sort of half an hour. Um, and then um, I'll be joined by my um, colleague um, Sabine, who's the program leader for the for those two degrees, the fashion management in marketing and the marketing. And then she's going to give you a bit of a presentation about the academic side um, of the program and the different classes you'll take, etc. And then after that, um, for those of you that still want to stay, I've got one of my colleagues from the study abroad department who will tell you a little bit more about how exchange works and stuff. Um, we're obviously on Zoom. Um, I'm sure most of you are fairly familiar with it by now. Um, as we're going through the presentations, please do type in any questions you have into the chat box and um, we'll answer those for you as we go through. And we'll also have a little bit of a short Q&A um, at the end as well. Um, equally, when we get to the Q&A session, if you want to um, turn off your camera and um, unmute yourself or just unmute yourself and ask questions, then you can do that as well. Um, before I share my screen and go, get into the presentation, um, I'm just going to show you a short video from our um, Pro Vice Chancellor, Dr. Anna Oliveira. Um, she's just got a short welcome message for you. Um, so yeah, thanks, thanks all for, for being here. I'm just going to stop sharing my screen and then you'll see the, uh, the video pop up. Hello, I'm delighted to welcome you to Richmond, the International American University in London. We have so much to offer and there's so much to gain by becoming a member of our international academic community. Richmond's been founded in 1972 and it's the only UK American university. It has a rich history of fostering international studies within a liberal arts tradition. This means that you don't just leave with a qualification, you leave with a breadth of knowledge and a richly diverse international experience. It is also the first and only UK university to award its students both a UK and US degree. We are also really proud that our graduates have a commitment to the well-being of others and society. Optional internships are also embedded in the curriculum that provide invaluable work experience. Our undergraduates do some sort of voluntary work, service learning in a structured way that helps them develop a sense of personal and social responsibility and prepare them for complexity, to deal with complexity and diversity and change. It also helps them develop a sense of community that many of our students and alumni cherish. Thank you for joining us today to hear more about Richmond. I look forward to seeing you in London, one of the most exciting cities in the world. Hi there, everyone. Um, Thank you um, for that. So as mentioned, my name's Adam and I work in the recruitment department here at Richmond, the American International University in London. Um, today, we're going to, I'm gonna take you through um, why uh, you should study at Richmond, what, what makes Richmond quite a unique institution here in the UK. Um, I'll give you some general information about our undergraduate degree programs. Um, some information on our internships and study abroad, tuition fees and scholarships, um, the application process, and then we'll have the question and answer session. And as I said, after that, I'll be joined by my colleague who will be telling you um, more detailed information about the BA fashion management uh, and marketing and our BA marketing degrees. Um, before um, I get into sort of the, the more interesting detail, I just wanted to give you a quick COVID-19 update. So obviously we understand that, um, yeah, the current situation has big implications for you starting university. And uh, we just wanted to sort of reassure you a little bit that um, we've put lots of measures in place over the last year to ensure that the campus is um, sort of COVID secure. And we've received some really good feedback from our students saying that they feel safe on campus. Um, 
unlike some other universities in the UK, uh, we haven't had any large outbreaks of um, COVID-19 on campus. So that's um, quite a positive thing. Over the last year, um, due to government regulations, we've been doing a combination of online and face-to-face -face teaching. Um, the plan for September 2021, so if for those of you looking to join us this September, this fall, um, we very much hope to have face-to-face -face teaching start then, but um, obviously that will depend a little bit on the circumstances and the situation at the time come September and what the government advice is. Um, and we may have to resort to a combination of in-person and face-to-face -face teaching depending on, on the situation. Uh, we will of course keep you updated of any um, changes and of the regulations as they are, as they are happening. Um, so you're fully informed and you'll be able to um, yeah, make an informed decision about joining us in September or not. The other thing I'd just like to mention is that all our degrees, can you can start all of our degrees in January as well. So for those of you that are unsure about September, um, then you can join us in January. And so there's only a couple of months gap in between those two, the two start dates. Um, now, for those of you that sort of don't know, Richmond is a US, uh, what we call liberal arts university. So this means we follow the US system of higher education, um, which is a little bit different to the UK system, but obviously we are based in London and you are going to graduate with both a British degree and an American degree. Um, and the US system, we just like to highlight a few things. Um, so particularly the diversity, both of our curriculum, it's very international. Um, you can study a wide range of classes within each subject, of courses within each subject, um, and then within our student body as well. So we have a really nice diverse uh, mix of students on campus. Um, the US liberal arts system also has a lot of choice and flexibility um, built into it, much more so than the, than the US system. Um, so you've probably heard of majors and minors um, from TV. And um, what that basically means is that you can study two different areas um, while you're at university. You're not just limited to studying one topic. Um, so you've got the choice and flexibility within that. And if we take today's classes, for example, you might be a BA marketing student and that would be your major, but you might decide, oh, it'd be really good if I could also study some advertising and PR or some psychology or maybe some economics alongside my marketing. And at Richmond, you can do that. And that would be called having studying a minor. Um, you also have the choice to change your major. You may en enter Richmond as a marketing student, study marketing for a semester and go, actually, I kind of want to study advertising and PR as my major. And you can switch easily. Um, so, yeah, you've got that choice and flexibility. Um, and then that also links to the, uh, this idea of having freedom as well. So you've got the freedom to switch your course, courses. Um, we offer internships to all students and you can do those abroad as well. So you've got the freedom to sort of travel and do an internship in the UK or abroad. You could also study abroad at one of our partner universities. So you could perhaps go and spend a semester in New York or Florida or LA or Australia or Asia. Um, so we feel that that really is a nice proposition for you um, and gives you sort of more choice and more flexibility. Um, some other really important things that uh, Richmond offers um, and that you should really be aware of when making decisions about university is, uh, uh, is our class sizes, but specifically our size in general. So we're a very small university. We have sort of 1,500 students across four years and uh, two campuses. So this means our average class size is um, about 25 students. So it's much more like a school classroom style of learning. And um, you're gonna be sitting in a classroom with 25 other students, with your professor, and you're gonna be having um, engaging interactive lessons. You're not gonna be in a big lecture hall with 300 people where you can just sit at the back, fall asleep, um, you know, like you do at perhaps at some, some other universities. So that's a really important thing to understand. And then because of that, because of our size, we can offer you a lot of um, a support that perhaps you won't find at bigger institutions. So for example, all students at Richmond have their own personal academic advisor. So this is a full-time member of staff that will um, 
advise you and help you through your three or four years of study. Um, they'll also um, be available to yeah, help you if you want to study abroad or if you're not sure about taking a minor, for example, and they can assist you with that. Um, we have a really nice diverse student body. So I mentioned before that we're very international and diversity is um, sort of at the core of Richmond. And within your class of 25 students, you might be studying with um, 12, 13, 14 different nationalities. And we think that's really important because everyone is bringing a slightly different um, opinion and perspective to debate. So you're gonna have more interesting, diverse discussions. Um, and hopefully that's gonna help you to see the world in a slightly different way. We have some really generous scholarships. I'm going to talk about these um, in more detail in a few more slides. So all students at Richmond can get some sort of uh, scholarship. We have uh, a integrated internship program that's for credit. And by that, I mean that your internship is part of your degree. If you take an internship class, it means you don't have to take another class. Your internship will make up part of your final grade. It's not something you just do for two weeks in the summer um, to put on your CV. You know, you're going to have to study for your internship. You're going to have to do an assessment on it. And it's inbuilt into your degree. Um, we have really high contact hours for first year study and beyond. So minimum of 15 hours a week face to face teaching. Most other universities will be offering you less than that. So that's something else to look out for. Um, we have study abroad opportunities. Um, so this is when I'll tell you in a few more slides when you can go and study at a partner university. So I mentioned before about possibly going and spending a semester in Florida or New York. Lots of our students do this and there's no reason why you couldn't as well. And then we have guaranteed accommodations for new students. So we have a lovely, um, fairly old building in Richmond, but it's a lovely building on campus that all our first year students can um, stay in if they, if they wish. Um, and then what does this mean to you when you graduate? So in terms of actual um, becoming a Richmond graduate, you're going to have two degrees, so a UK degree and a US degree. You're going to become part of our alumni network, which is from, um, which is 15,000 strong and um, yep, spans 140 countries. This is a great resource for you to utilize and um, yeah, tap into while you're a student or maybe when you graduate, when you're looking for work. Our destination statistic here, so we have 93% um, graduate employment, and that means within six months of leaving university, 93% of our graduates are in um, full-time graduate employment or in um, full-time study. And then we've also won awards for our student services. So that attention and support we can give you while you're studying has been recognized by um, yeah, industry bodies. Um, and then just to highlight a couple of um, other things that I've mentioned here about the differences between a US liberal arts degree and a UK degree. Um, I know some of our US uh, students here will obviously know this already, but perhaps some of our UK and um, EU students, um, this just makes things a little bit clearer. Um, so I mentioned before about having a major and a minor. Um, you can also enter Richmond with what we, um, as an undeclared student. So this means that you haven't selected your degree. So maybe you think I wanna study business, but I don't know if I wanna study marketing or economics or finance and investment. So you can just enter Richmond, you can spend the first year doing what we call our liberal arts core classes. And then at the end of the first year, you could decide, okay, yes, I wanna do marketing, um, for example. Um, all our majors are supported by a wide range of electives. So what that means is that within your subject, so let's say you're a marketing student and you take 10 marketing classes over the course of a year, you might have three or four of those classes or what we call electives. So that means you get to choose from a really long list of different topics. So you might think, oh, I really want to know about digital marketing. So you can decide to take a class in digital marketing or in um, luxury brand management marketing, or um, yeah, there's lots of different options. Um, and I would say that in the US liberal arts system, you get a lot more of those electives than you do in a UK university. Um, and you can see there that in a UK university, you might only take six classes a year, and maybe in your final year, you might get two electives, and you might have a list of maybe three or four choices. 
Um, so you can really specialize in the area you want to here at Richmond, and you can certainly sort of design and build your degree around what you're really interested in and what you want to do. Um, whereas I feel that the UK system is a bit more rigid, it's a bit more strict, um, and you're a bit more limited in what you can do. Um, and that's, I think, really important because it allows you to stand out a little bit from other graduates, you know, particularly if you think of something like marketing. Yeah? There's probably maybe 60,000 60, people who graduate a year in the UK with a marketing degree. What's going to make you sort of stand out? What's going to make you different? How are you going to position yourself when you're looking for a job? And if you can say, ah, well, I've got a, a degree in marketing, but I also have a minor in psychology and I specialized in the, the psychological behavior of consumers, that's going to hopefully, you know, give you an edge in the job market. Or maybe you, you do a minor in advertising and PR. Um, so that's going to complement, you know, the, the, the major that you're doing. Um, you should also be aware um, that American degrees are traditionally four years in length. So Americans generally go to high school for a year less do for a year less than we do here in the UK or in Europe. And so their degrees, uh, their university degrees are longer. Now, for some degrees here at Richmond, students can complete them in three years. Um, uh, but most of the degrees will take you um, yeah, nearer four years to complete. Now, for some European and UK students, you can get what we call advanced credit, which means you can skip a lot of those classes in the first year. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about more about that in a second. Um, and as I mentioned before, we've got um, the accredited internship programs and um, you're going to graduate with two degrees. Um, so, yeah, just a few of the, the differences there. Um, so this liberal arts core curriculum, so all students at Richmond um, will have to study what we call our liberal arts core curriculum and you can see the different classes that make that up here and this would be over the course of your first year now a lot of us and students from other countries will have to do the whole year like this and will study for the full four years with us now students from the uk or particularly from european um, countries if you have the ib um, if you have certain qualifications you can then skip um, a lot of these classes because you basically would have already studied them at school um, and that means that you um, can do your degree in three and a half years or perhaps even three years if you have uh, the right qualifications. I know that that sounds a little bit complicated um, but uh, it's not because we're going to guide you through the process and we're going to tell you exactly uh, which classes you may or may not need to take um, and um, yeah, it's just, you know, you, by having this choice and flexibility, it, um, yeah, it just may, it does mean that there's a little bit more complexity to it. But it also means that you are not just treated um, as, a, as a person, it means that you're treated on a much more personal and individual level. Because every student at Richmond, we look at your entry qualifications, your high school classes, we look at the classes you've taken and the grades we've got, um, and then we map out an individual pathway for you to complete your degree, you know, whereas in other places, everyone's just like, okay, you've got these grades, you're all just in the same same position. So we're going to look back at your um, yeah, previous studies and really um, give you a personalized academic plan. Um, so today we're obviously here to hear about our BA marketing and our BA fashion management and marketing degrees. Um, but I just wanted to highlight to you the other degrees that we offer. So within the business um, school, business um, department, we have a business management degree and there are two strands. There's entre entrepreneurship and international business. We also have an economics degree, finance and investment, uh, which is looking a lot at banking, um, investment vehicles, foreign exchange systems. We have an accounting and finance degree and you can get um, a large number of um, exemptions from the um, ACCA, so that's the accounting qualification. And we have an international sports management programme, which is taught up in Leeds. We also have a school of uh, communications, arts and social science. And you can see that there's a few more degrees here, but these broadly fit into sort of four different categories. So we've got the communications degrees you can see here, advertising and PR, media studies, and then we have a new degree from last year, digital communications and social media. 
And I think for some of you here that are, you know, you guys are interested in um, management and marketing, that this would, these are really nice degrees to complement the, the fashion management and the marketing. So you're looking a lot at digital media, social media, um, branding, advertising campaigns, like slogans, these side of things. Um, whereas the business marketing, you know, this is more of a business degree that's looking at marketing from a um, from an overall business um, perspective. Um, but Sabine will go into more details about that. Um, we had then have a film and photography and film studies degrees. Um, so film and photography is very practical, using cameras, using equ equipment. Um, film studies is a bit more theoretical, a bit more holistic, looking at theories of films, history of cinema, acting, directing, script writing. We then have our social science degrees, so history, international relations, politics, and American studies. And there's obviously a lot of crossover with the degrees here. And then we have a BA degree in psychology, which is accredited from the British Psychological Society. Now, um, the following degrees, basically the non-business degrees can be completed in three years. Um, you will need to have slightly higher entry qualifications. Um, and yeah, you can see here that we need you to have three individual A-levels with minimum grade C um, or the equivalent. Um, I've mentioned internships and um, please do pay a lot of attention when you're looking at different universities to what type of internships or work experience opportunities they offer you. Because um, you know, in this today's job market, more and more people have degrees. Um, so having some work experience um, alongside your degree is going to be really um, helpful and good for you when you're when you're looking for a job. Um, all students at Richmond can do an internship in there um, while they're studying. So that would usually be in your third year um, or in or your fourth year, depending on how long you're here with us for. And um, they are eight to 10 weeks in length. Um, they are organized in conjunction with our internships office. So we employ a team of people um, to essentially help you um, find an internship. So they have a network of about 300 companies in London that we place students with each year. And um, at the start of your third year, you will have meetings with um, Cecile and you'll, she'll ask you questions and you'll talk to her about the type of organization you want to work for, the type of work you want to do. Um, and then she'll propose some internships to you. Um, for some of them, you will have to interview, you'll have to do a job application. Um, so it's quite formal. Um, and that's essentially because we will be awarding you credit. It will be part of your degree program. Um, so for credit, they count towards your degree. Um, and because of that, you need to produce work. You need to do a reflective journal or a final portfolio. Um, often you'll have to do a presentation about your experiences, plus your supervisor from your workplace will then speak to the university and give a report on you. Um, and these are obviously great for students to get practical work experience. You're gonna be putting into practice a lot of the theory that you've been learning over the last couple of years. Um, and we have really, really great um, sort of responses and results. Um, London is a global center for marketing, PR, for fashion industries. Um, so we've done some really great things in those areas um, yeah, over the last few years. And if you, wanted to, you could also do an internship abroad. So we do have connections um, overseas as well. Um, we have students that have been offered permanent work through their internships. They've impressed the employers on their internship. They've been offered permanent um, jobs. Uh, we've even had international students that companies have agreed to sponsor for their visas because they really wanted them to stay and, and work for the organizations. Um, and we know that this, um, this combination of um, study in a specialized area, having some practical work experience is really gonna make you ready for the job market and put you in a great position when you are looking for jobs. Um, here I've got a couple of student comments that I'm gonna go through and then I'm gonna hand you over to one of our current students, um, Bonnie, who's studying the marketing degree, who's gonna tell you a little bit about her experiences um, at Richmond so far. Um, so I just wanted to highlight here Katrina. So she's an economics graduate 
Um, but she studied our liberal arts core curriculum and she really noticed that when she um, was working at EY, that the liberal arts background she had made her stand out from some of the other students um, because um, she had this all round ability to critically think, which they didn't, you know, they just had this um, yeah, more limited knowledge of economics. Um, and then here, Miriam, you can see here. Um, so she um, is about to graduate this year um, with a degree in international relations. And she did an internship um, with an MP at the Houses of Parliament, um, which was obviously a great experience for her to understand a little bit more about British politics and how, um, and how the yeah, political structure works here in the UK. Um, I'm now going to hand you over to um, Bonnie, uh, one of our student ambassadors, who's going to take you um, through um, a couple of slides. Um, Bonnie, are you there? Yes. Hi. Hi, Bonnie. Well, hi, everyone. Mm -hmm. so, um, my name is Bonnie, and I am a current marketing student here at Richmond. Right now, I'm in my second year, and I am also a digital studies minor. And a quick fun fact about me is that I was actually born in Vietnam, raised in England and Germany, but my nationality is American. <laughs> so um, they're all on different continents, which I think is pretty cool. So for me, choosing a university is obviously a really big decision. And, you know, I didn't make a lot of different pros and cons lists, but in the end, I ended up deciding that Richmond was the best place for me. And one of the biggest deciding factors of that was the location. See, London is a really big central location. You get to do a lot of cool things here. And um, the location of Richmond specifically is really nice. Um, it feels really safe in Richmond. There's like a really big park that you can go and walk in and um, it's just a really cool area to be in. It's about 40 minutes away from central London. So you can pop down into central um, on the weekends with your friends or even after school. Um, and it's just a really great location. As well, the UK and US degree was a big factor because um, not only will I be graduating with like a US degree, like most of my friends, but I'll also have a UK degree, which um, will be helpful when trying to find a job in the future. Um, Richmond offers a really big amount of flexibility, which was really important to me because when I first applied to Richmond, I actually applied as a psychology student. And I chose to change my major at the end of my second year because I took a marketing elective and decided I really liked it. So that was really important to me. I wasn't um, sure that um, psychology would, was what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And I know that other unis don't always offer this level of flexibility. Yeah. Um, the small class sizes here are really nice. It gives like a very personal feel to the education. Um, you get to know your classmates and your teachers really well and on a personal level. Like when I walk into class, like the professors know who every single student is and they're able to recognize their names and faces, which is really, really nice. Um, Richmond was founded on the principle of unity and diversity, which I think is very true and very reflective of the student body. There are students here from all over the world, and I've gotten to learn so much um, from my friends and just other people on campus about like different perspectives, different cultures, and um, oh, the small and close community. Richmond is a very small university, <laughs> but it's been really nice because you get to um, know everybody really, really quickly because you see, you recognize the faces you see around campus, and um, I really wanted that because I went to a very small high school. Yeah. So I think that it was an easier transition for me to go to a community of like around 2000 people instead of like 20,000 people. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you also get a lot of like personal attention from like the staff and um, here at Richmond. Mm -hmm. Like my first day actually, when I was choosing all my classes, uh, the person who was like signing me in, they were like, oh, I actually read your um, essay. <laughs> and I was like, oh really? <laughs> so that was pretty funny. Um, and he remembered me, which was like really interesting, but I feel like that wouldn't happen at a bigger school. Yeah. And as well, there's a lot of really cool study abroad opportunities here. I'm pretty sure that they offer on almost every single continent except for Antarctica. So um, I'm really looking forward to doing yeah. that after COVID. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to tell a bit more about study abroad in a second. Yeah. Well, academic opportunities. Richard has a lot of really cool academic opportunities here as well. They have the internship program, which Adam spoke about earlier. As well, we have a lot of societies here dedicated to like specific majors. So there's like the Communication Society, the Fashion Society, the International Relations Society. And they usually put together like career panel talks where they will invite professionals or um, alumni who are already working in the field to talk about their experiences 
and just to give tips on the how to make it in the industry, which is really, really cool. And definitely recommend attending them if you do decide to come to Richmond. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a lot of extracurricular activities extracurricular opportunities and ways to get involved in like leadership. Um, and there's a lot of different clubs that are not related to um, your major specifically. So we have like dance club, theater club. Um, so there's a lot of cool things that you can do on the side just for your interest. And a lot of them have the ability to um, take up like leadership positions in them. Um, there's a lot of social opportunity too, because we are in London. Um, the student government regularly puts on social events. Well, I mean, before COVID, um, <laughs> they had um, usually there's like club nights that they host. They have pub quizzes where you can go just in the pub and like do a quiz, which is a lot of fun. And also you can always go out with your friends, go clubbing, go to the theater. <laughs> and there's also a lot of um, travel opportunity. Um, London, flights from London to like the continental Europe are really, really cheap, especially compared to like flying around America, which is really, really nice. And the transportation system in London is just really good. So I can get on a bus for like a pound 50 and pretty much go anywhere I want, which is really, really nice. Mm -hmm. So for the future, um, my graduation year is 2023. So that's four years um, for me, a four year degree. And I hope to do an internship or I plan to do an internship um, in my next year or my last year at school, either through Richmond or you can also do summer internships on your own. Um, I plan to work in either the US or the UK, and I hope to travel more. Yeah. Cool, brilliant. Um, Bonnie, that, that was lovely, thank you. Um, and Bonnie will be here at the end um, if, to answer any questions that you might have. And um, yeah, so please do type anything you have in the, in the chat box. And equally, if you wanted to speak to her um, yeah, later on, I could, um, yeah, if you send me an email, I'll be sharing contact details in a minute, then we'll be able to, um, yeah, put you in touch with her. Um, sorry, I'm just having a slight issue with my screen there, but um, hopefully that's fine now. Um, so you, Bonnie talked a little bit there about the sort of small community and the class sizes. Um, and I just, yeah, it'd be good now just to highlight that, you know, this, perhaps this environment isn't for everybody. You know, if you don't want to be in a classroom where the teacher knows your name and can say, hey, um, John, please uh, answer this question, then, you know, you know what type of environment you want to be in. And that's something you should be thinking about when you when you choose university. Um, as Bonnie mentioned, we have this lovely campus in Richmond. For those of you that don't know London, Richmond's in southwest London. You can sort of see it here. Um, it's very green. It's very beautiful. It's kind of like a really nice sort of posh uh, borough to live in. Um, but it's only 40 minutes on the tube from central London. This red line here is the trains and there's fast trains to the, um, yeah, to Waterloo, to the centre of London that take about 25 minutes. So, yeah, you can literally be anywhere in London uh, within, a, within the hour. Um, so, yeah, if you want to go after school in the evenings up to London, you can. Um, or you can just stay in quieter Richmond um, and, yeah, and chill. This park, Richmond Park, um, it's one of the largest parks in Europe. Um, it's where the Queen keeps her deer, um, and there's obviously some great things to do there. Um, our campus, oh, excuse me. Um, so our main campus is in Richmond Hill, and this main building here is where we have student accommodation and um, yeah, student halls, and students will obviously um, stay there. We also have a building in Kensington, which is where our master's students will do their study. Um, so we talked obviously about London being a great uh, student city. It's consistently voted the, the world's number one student city, and it is the, the global hub for the advertising, PR, marketing industries, um, and for, for fashion as well. So for these degrees in particular, it is the place to be, and the opportunities and the networking um, that you're going to get by studying those degrees in London is, uh, is going to be higher um, and better than perhaps in other cities. Um, we've mentioned here a little bit about study abroad. So lots of UK um, universities offer study abroad. And this is essentially where you will go to a partner university um, for a semester or for a year. You basically take the same classes um, that you would be taking at Richmond, but you're taking them maybe at a Pace University in New York or a business school in Paris. And um, so you have this cool international experience. You don't delay your graduation because you're still taking the same classes. And um, the best thing about it 
um, particularly uh, for sort of European students going to the US, is that you're still paying your Richmond tuition because it's an exchange. So you don't have to pay any extra fees, which if you go to a US university, you know, some of these universities cost 60, $70,000 a year, but you can go with your UK student loan um, or just paying your normal Richmond fees. Uh, we have ooh, 25 partners around the world, I believe. Um, so um, this isn't a complete list. Um, please visit the website and you can see the full list of um, institutions. Um, but yeah, New York, Florida, LA, um, we've got ones in yeah, Ecuador, Peru, Australia, New Zealand. There's two really good universities here. Um, Shanghai, Japan, Korea. Um, so there's really good lots of lots of options open for you if you want to do that. Um, Bonnie mentioned a little bit about clubs and societies. So obviously as a smaller university, we perhaps don't have um, as many clubs and societies as some larger universities. But what's really great about um, at Richmond is that everything is student led and student run. Um, and so if you get a group of students and you really want to do something, then the student government and student affairs department will help you to, um, to do that, essentially. They'll help you to set up the society. There can be some funding available to set societies up. Um, and then you can really go off around London and do um, lots and lots of cool things. Um, we also host our own university events. Um, so, uh, for example, um, Thanksgiving, Halloween, um, Spring Festival is a big end of year party that we do um, on campus. And so these have a bit more of an American theme, but um, they're really great fun and they're put on by the university for the students. Um, moving on to some more sort of practical details. So um, you can see here entry requirements. So these are our standard entry requirements. Um, You'll essentially need your high school qualification with these minimum grades you see here. As I've talked before, um, the higher your grades, the more advanced credit you can get, meaning you can perhaps finish the degree a bit faster. Um, so, you know, you might think, ah, oh, this 28 IB points is quite low, but if you've got 40, 40 IB points, then you can perhaps skip the whole of the first year. And um, for American students, there's no SAT or ACT. We just need your high school diploma. Um, and guys, for international students, if you're not sure if you've got, um, you know, a Spanish baccalaureate or an Italian diploma, um, please just um, send us an email, get in touch, and we'll be able to tell you if it meets our requirements. For those of you that don't speak English as a first language, um, we will need you to give us some proof of your English language ability. So that would usually be an IELTS certificate, um, but there's also TOEFL, IBT, Cambridge, and there's another one called Pearson, which are very common um, English tests that we can accept. We have really a general scholarship. So for EU students, tuition fees are £9,250, but um, we can give you a scholarship of £3,000 and that reduces the fees to £6,165. So this is a bit less than other UK universities. For European students, uh, we have this really great scholarship this year, uh, 5,500 pounds. And um, for international students, we have these different awards here. These are merit-based awards. So um, the higher your high school grades, um, the, the bigger the reduction you can get. And these scholarships will, um, sorry, this US ones are here as well. These scholarships will reduce the tuition fees. So you know, international fees, US fees, so yeah, you would, this is the published fee and then your scholarship will reduce these fees. These scholarships are automatically awarded on application, so you don't need to do a separate application um, and they are valid for your whole time that you're studying as well. So they're renewed automatically each year, as long as you maintain a, a minimum GPA. Um, so these are really generous um, and they're really going to help you to, um, yeah, to, uh, to, yeah, to help reduce your fees. Um, in terms of application processes, so we are on UCAS, so this is the main application service here in the UK. And then there's something called the Common App, which is basically an American version of UCAS, so it's the, the application system that um, lots of American students will use. You can also apply to us directly. So we have an online application form. This is on the website. 
So you just need to complete this form. But however you apply to us, you will, all, you will need to submit the supporting documents you can see here. So we need a personal statement saying why you want to study um, this degree at Richmond and what passion you have for the, your subject, what skills or experience you have in this area, and also a little bit about what you want to do in the future. This should be about 500 words, your personal statement. We'd like a reference from a teacher or school counsellor. Um, copies of any high school certificates or transcripts you might have. Uh, we need some ID, so that would usually be your passport. And then IELTS, or if English isn't um, your first language, yeah, an English language certificate. Um, and then you would just email these documents to um, our admissions department, um, and then they will be able to confirm your place. Um, that's it from um, me. Um, I can see that um, I have um, Sabine here as well. Um, so she will be taking over and giving you more details on the BA marketing and fashion management degrees in a moment. But just before we um, do that, if you do have any questions, if you have any questions for Bonnie, then please do let us know. Um, you can type them in the chat box or you can um, unmute yourself. Um, I see that we have a question here. Um, yeah, so very good question here from um, from one of our students who um, is, um, well, sorry, excuse me a second, um, who is probably an EU student. <laughs> and so let me just reshare the screen. I just want to highlight there. So because of Brexit from um, one of the consequences of Britain leaving the EU is that European students are now charged international fees here in the UK. So previously, European students paid the same as UK, that those fees have gone up over the last year. And essentially, because we still really value our EU students and we want you to come and study with us, we have offered this really generous scholarship of £5,500. So this reduces the fees from, yeah, 14750 to 9250 So EU students will be paying the same as UK students this year um, because we are offering that scholarship. Um, I hope that answered your um, that um, answers your question, um, Sophie. Sophia, um, guys, do we have other questions, please? So, um, yeah, another um, good question here about scholarships for international students. So, um, so for the. U US students, you see that we have the, 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 um, the scholarships you see here. For European students, you have this um, £5,500 scholarship. And obviously for our UK students, we have this um, £3,000 scholarship here. For international students, um, you, you have this range of scholarships here. And I can't give lots of detail um, because it will depend on your high school qualifications. So, for example, if you're um, from India and you're doing the Indian high school qualification and you get rough, it's roughly 65 percent, you can get a two thousand pound discount. If you get 75 percent, you can get three thousand pounds. If you get 80 percent, you can get three thousand seven fifty and so on. So it's a merit graded award. So the better your grades, the, the larger the discount you can get. And um, if you visit this scholarship scholarships section of the website, you'll see that we've listed some countries there. But if your country isn't listed there, please just send us an email and we'll be able to tell you the exact grades you would need um, to get the different scholarships. Um, it obviously varies between countries um, and their high school qualifications. But as a general rule, you're looking at around 60 to 75 percent for the smaller awards and then 75 to 85 percent for the larger awards. So that's a sort of rough way of thinking about it. Um, there too, um, so, so another question here about um, sort of the scholarships and the awards. So these are automatically awarded on application and you just need to meet the entry requirements. So the criteria is must achieve university entry requirements. So if you're doing the IB, that's a minimum of um, 28 points on the IB. Obviously, you should have higher, um, and that would be better for you as you'll get more advanced credit. Um, I have a question here about parking on campus. Um, it is possible to uh, park on campus, um, but it's not, um, you do have to apply. Um, 
So yeah, we would sort of um, need to speak to you um, about that and work out exactly how many days you wanted to, to come in. Um, but yeah, we do have parking in, at the Richmond campus. Um, guys, there's some really good questions there. Thank you. Um, I just, um, Sabine, I can see that you're you're here, which is great. Um, and um, hi. <laughs> and I just, if there's anything else people do have to ask, please do type it in. Um, and obviously, we can we can um, give you replies while um, yeah over the next hour or so. Um, but otherwise, I think I will I will hand over to you, Sabine. Um, so Sabine is our um, yeah, is the program leader for the fashion management and marketing and the BA marketing degrees. So she's going to give you a bit of a, a run through on the, of the academic side of things. Um, and then, as I mentioned, um, once she's finished, that I've got a colleague from the study study abroad department who'll be able to tell you a little bit more about the the partnerships and things that we have. Um, yeah, Sabine. <laughs> That's great. Thank you very much, Adam. So um, welcome, every, everybody. Uh, so I'm Sabina Spangenberg. I'm the Associate Dean of the Business School. So a little bit of information or about what, what is the Business School. So this is a unit within the university that uh, delivers undergraduate and postgraduate degrees in the business area. So we currently have seven different undergraduate degrees and a number of postgraduate degrees. And uh, here, of course, we're now looking at uh, the BA in marketing with combined studies and the BA in fashion management and marketing with combined studies. So as you know, these, uh, these degrees are all uh, four-year degrees. So um, you're basically studying um, a liberal arts with combined studies degree um, with a major in marketing or in fashion management and marketing. So I will tell you a little bit about um, the, the content of the program and why you should really be coming to, to Richmond to, uh, to st study with us. So both of these uh, degrees very much give you the latest insights from the fashion industry and uh, the retail businesses. We have a lot of faculty who come directly from marketing experience or fashion retail product development into the classroom next to um, scholarly academics who, who teach you some of the operational and functional areas um, of, of this program. So you get a very, very good exposure to the recent, the most recent developments uh, in those areas. The, the program allows students to gain a strong knowledge and expertise um, within the fields. And uh, this, when I say within the field of business, this means you will take courses in accounting, you will take courses in economics, you will take courses in, for example, organizational management and so on, which will aid you to understand, to comprehend um, the, the functioning and the operations of business and how to manage and, and market. So why should you come to, um, to Richmond to study these particular degrees? Um, these degrees help you to identify and market the, the true value proposition of a product and a service, as well as conducting market and consumer research. So both degrees have a very, very strong element um, in the analysis and the research side, because you need to understand how consumers tick, how demand works, what programs you should, sorry, products you should develop and, uh, and market. And uh, of course, these can be any, any product when you're doing marketing, but of course, we're looking at a particular sector, the fashion sector um, for the fashion management and marketing degree. So you will learn about the psychology in relation to luxury brands, luxury products, um, why do people opt to purchase high value products? 
Is it for the durability? Is it for uh, imaging purposes, etc.? So you will learn very much about that. You will also develop your skills in trend spotting to identify where, where are the markets going at the moment, um, in particular in, uh, in fashion buying and merchandising. A lot of our courses, uh, the individual modules on these programs have a global outlook. So we don't just, although we are delivering this program here in London, which is fabulous, of course, and Adam told you a lot about uh, London as a, as a place to study. Now, of course, London is a business hub. London is a fashion capital. Um, but at the same time, of course, you need to understand the rest of the world. So our courses have a very strong global outlook and you can deepen on both your programs. You can deepen your understanding and your knowledge through experience within, and that's a practical experience within um, businesses, within companies, or within charities, if you like, uh, within the non-for-profit sector. You can do this through our internship program, and I strongly recommend this to, to be considered by, by any student uh, at Richmond. It really um, improves your employability. It demonstrates to future employers that you have gained some insight, you have um, gotten your hands a bit dirty. You, you don't just get the beautiful things in, uh, in a theoretical uh, way. You actually um, work to get down and, and, and demonstrate what, uh, what you've learned. Another reason um, why you should come to Richmond to, uh, to look into these two programs is that we have very, very active uh, student societies. We have an economics forum, a finance and investment forum, and these are of course of relevance to you on those programs. But in particular, do we have the Richmond Fashion Society, which uh, has been a, 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 an award-winning society at Richmond. And uh, like Adam said, these societies are student-led and students have been producing some absolutely fabulous, um, fabulous things here. We've had fashion shows. We've been, uh, we've seen um, a very glossy magazine put together by the society. So uh, there's lots of stuff that uh, you can actually get involved in and engage with the program in in that form. Um, I'd like to just tell you a bit more about the the structure of the program if that's all right um so both programs are four-year programs and uh, you will have courses within business management and marketing which are shared with other business degrees and these courses really come in, in in your second second year. In your first year, you're taking courses in foundations of business and some mathematical skills courses uh, and, and understanding courses that um, support your learning in, in that area later on. But let me give you some examples of courses that um, really stand out for me if I look at the fashion uh, management and marketing degree. So you will be taking courses in fashion uh, marketing and retail. You will be taking a course in psychology of fashion and luxury goods. You will be learning to understand and apply digital marketing tools. You will be taking a course in global marketing management. There is fashion product development. So you have lots and lots of different courses at, uh, at various levels, which speak directly to, uh, to the fashion sector or indeed to, to the marketing um, area. 
So um, at the moment, we have a large number of electives too. So um, within your major, you can choose to um, either support your major through additional courses. You can do that if you like. So you can choose electives. Perhaps you're interested in human resource management. So that's a course that you could perhaps choose um, or you want to do something um, you know, which is quite numerical, maybe you want to do econometrics, or maybe you're kind of creative and you want to do something in creating digital images, that's all very, very good. So you can take these courses to support your major further, but you can also, of course, choose a minor. And I would strongly recommend every, every student to consider that. So what we do find um, in um, actually for both programs, whether that is marketing or fashion management and marketing, we do see a lot of course uh, students opting for a, um, for a minor in psychology, for example, because that aids your understanding of um, behavioral forms and choice um, and uh, reaction perhaps certain um, well images or messages so that's a really really um, good and quite popular um, combination but you might be very interested in the data side of marketing so um, let's say you you choose the generic marketing program and I say generic because it is not um, specified uh, in a sector sense. So you, you can do marketing for cars or you could do marketing for food or you could do marketing for petrol, right? So it's not sector specific. Um, and what you could do here is of course, you might be interested in, in the whole data analysis side. And I would here strongly recommend students to consider taking a minor in mathematics, um, or you might want to combine um, your marketing degree with um, further insight in, into business or do something completely different. You can do a minor in international relations, for example, if you, if you were interested in perhaps a wider understanding of, uh, of the world uh, and how, how that can interrelate with, with business management and, um, and, and marketing. So on both degrees, uh, you will learn about the nature and purpose of business organizations, yeah? So you, you don't just focus on marketing or the fashion sector, you get a very comprehensive overview of business organizations. You will gain an understanding and knowledge of key concepts relating to the functioning of businesses. So you will be able to understand organizational behavior. You will be able to understand finance. You will be able to um, understand some financial statements even. So a little bit of accounting you will be able to understand the wider economic environment. There's also a very strong focus on, on culture and um, ethics in, in our degrees. So uh, we have a focus, for example, in um, on our fashion degree, there is a course on um, ethics and sustainability, so ethical fashion, uh, which of course is, uh, is a very current and a hot topic uh, that's uh, always being discussed. How do we produce ethically? How do we consume ethically? Um, but not just, of course, within the fashion sector, but in other sectors too. So ethical marketing, um, is, is also a component that you will come across um, very frequently on your program and you will understand this in depth having completed the program. Uh, a lot of our um, program outcomes um, speak to your criticality. We want you to become critical of 
common concepts, theories, um, and uh, principles. So please don't expect to, uh, to not have um, any, any heated discussions within the classroom. So uh, criticality is, is a very strong component of all our degrees. Um, in terms of the delivery of those, um, both of those, those degrees, I mentioned already that we do have um, faculty with lots of professional experience um, in the classroom alongside scholarly academics. And I think this really enhances your experience because what often happens is that uh, somebody who's come out of the professional, um, has, has entered from the professional side, has actually worked in marketing or within the fashion sector, these colleagues can bring in fascinating speakers um, to give you further insight into, into the area. So um, I, I, I strongly recommend that you, you consider all of these factors as being, you know, a very, very positive um, components of, of this program. And I'm very happy to take questions. I don't want to bombard you with uh, further sort of, here is a course on, uh, on, on corporate reputation management that you should take. I'd rather respond to questions, uh, should you have any, and then we can perhaps take it, take it from there. Do you have any questions? Um, we have had one question here, Sabine. Um, a student asking, um, if I did um, the fashion management and marketing um, as a major, and then would that allow me to transfer to fashion design? Um, so it's a, it's a US student, so either sort of later on or perhaps even afterwards. Sure, sure. Yes, absolutely. Um, that's a very good, very good question. So our fashion management and marketing degree is, is a business management degree. It is not an arts and design degree. Um, so I think um, it's a very good idea to combine the two, right? So if you want to you know, let's say you are creative and you want to set up your own uh, your own brand, then then definitely I would say you 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 can do that. And a lot of the courses that um, we we offer should be um, should should be able should allow you to transfer these into um, a different degree if you if that's what you are asking about. But if you're thinking of you know, doing something in design, I would also recommend to consider an arts, design and media minor uh, at, at Richmond. So you can take, you can combine the business management, the, the I say business management because that's the, the bigger framework within which really our fashion management and marketing degree sits. You can combine this fashion degree with uh, design, a, a minor in design, which should allow you to, um, you know, to do exactly that. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, then we have a question, I believe, which course do you believe pairs best with fashion marketing? I'm not quite sure about the question because the degree is uh, fashion management and marketing. So you have lots of different um, individual courses in fashion retail, fashion merchandising um, on the degree. So, um, oh, which minor? Yes, okay, which, well, like I said, <laughs> it's very much what you want to do later on. If you, yeah. if you want to get into, you know, setting up your own, own brand and you are creative, then like I said, you know, combine this with uh, with a minor that fosters that, like like a design uh, minor. Um, if you want to go into branding, 
if you if you're interested in social media, we have a minor in digital studies, uh, or it's called a digital minor. So that's mm. a pretty good combination as well. Um, and I mentioned the psychology minor previously. So I think for, for fashion, how do we want to look? Um, how do we how do we identify ourselves? How does fashion allow us to portray how we identify ourselves? So all of this really has a very strong psychological um, link in my view. So I think that's a really good minor. But as I said, you, you might simply be interested in, in, in finance or in economics. So we have lots and lots of different uh, ones to choose from. But mm -hmm. And you don't need to de decide this now, of course. Uh, I would recommend that you take a look at the minors that, uh, that we are offering as a minor in sustainability, for example. We have a minor in law. Um, so you could decide this. You could decide on the specifics of your major minor combination once, once you are at Richmond and uh, you will have an advisor who can who can guide you um, to which courses you know you should take. But the other thing, of course, is you can just send me an email. <laughs> we can we can arrange to have a chat about what what you're thinking about, what what you're interested in. Okay, I'll leave my email address at the end of the session so that you can get in touch with me mm. if you want to. Yeah, that's great. Um, I would say it really depends, I think, um, a little bit as well, what you want to sort of specialise in a little bit. And so that's that's sort of the beauty of having those different electives and being able to do um, a minor um, is that, yeah, as Sabine's just said with some of those examples, you know, if you want to go more the psychology behaviour of a consumer, or if you think you want to get into the design kind of things, then you have the option to do that. And I think for quite a few of you, you won't you won't realise the options and what things fully are until you start to study them a little bit. Um, and that's why it's great you don't have to decide straight away. And um, yeah, as Bonnie said, you know, she entered Richmond as a psychology student and then moved to marketing. So um, yeah, there's there's lots of lots of options awaiting you once you arrive and you don't feel too, yeah, too concerned that you perhaps don't know what you want to do now a little bit. And I think uh, just picking up uh, on that, Adam, yeah. I think uh, one of the beauties at Richmond is that you're not in a silo. Um, yeah. I, I don't, I think Bonnie will probably support this, that you, know, <laughs> you, you sit with all sorts of students in, uh, in, on a course. So, um, you know, you, you get an insight through the, uh, the other students also, you know, what might be a good idea to do, oh, which course has been really good, or, you know, you, you get that feedback. So um, there's a lot of exchange happening um, between students. Obviously, we've got the pandemic at the moment, so things are a little bit different. <laughs> but uh, I, still, I still think that, uh, that that's quite a big advantage that we have at Richmond, because we are we're kind of small enough to do that, you know, um, you, you can talk to each other. You, you're not sitting in a classroom with 200 other students doing fashion retail and nothing else, you know, yeah. doing the same thing. So, you know, somebody else might have taken this course that you're taking for your major as, uh, as an elective. And they might tell you something that you hadn't thought about. So I think there's uh, this, uh, this, this sort of, um multidisciplinary sort of atmosphere that happens in the courses is uh, is really eye-opening to students as to what could they do and this switching you know it's not hugely difficult to switch no. um your, your major uh within your first or, or well obviously in the second year it might become a little bit more difficult because you might have taken courses uh, which are no longer uh, relevant. But for example, if you if you can very easily within the first two two years of your study switch courses within the business school. Yeah. Uh, we've got a question. I would want to work with luxury fashion brands. Will mm -hmm. Help with that. Will I be able to make the connection through the university? Uh, absolutely. I think um, so. We have um, a dedicated course on luxury brand management. 
and um, we we do have an institutional connection with Condé Nast um, College of Fashion and Design. Um, so so we we are very well connected, and uh, we we can bring in, like I said earlier, people to talk to you on the luxury brand management course, for example, we regularly have guest speakers there and uh, they, they can give you ideas. And of course you, you um, should be able to, um, to do an internship, right? Um, in that area. So I think that, that helps with uh, employability later on, absolutely. Yeah. And just to, to jump in on that one as well, um, the other thing that, um, just to highlight, we, we do have expertise in this area, um, Yasmin, is that we have a master's degree in um, luxury brand management. Um, so we have, um, yeah, the connections we have from that do filter down a little bit into the bachelor's program. Um, and yeah, as Sabine mentioned, for something like an internship, because we have master's students um, doing, um, doing internships or the network um, uh, with the luxury industry that, um, yeah, we could certainly um, set you up in the luxury industry. The other question we had, Sabine, that I think we missed a little bit earlier was um, students was asking about the assessment methods. Um, oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, I can see that. Do we have exams yeah. or assessments during the course and how are we assessed? Very good, yeah. very important questions. Mm. So um, we, we are working on, uh, so, so our semesters are 15 week semesters. Mm. Yeah, they are uh, quite long in comparison to uh, certainly UK semesters. So what we typically do is we have a mid-semester exam. Um, do, you know, if you take a typical course in your first, second or third year, you would have a mid-semester exam. Often you have a final exam. Um, and then you might have a written project. Not all courses have final exams. Um, so for example, a course in fashion product development doesn't have a final exam or digital uh, marketing and social media. So you would be uh, producing, um, let's say it might be a Facebook page, you, you know, you, you, you are really, or you might be creating an app. Uh, so, not every course is assessed in the same way, but mm. do you have um, unseen exams um, where they are appropriate and uh, assessments in the form of uh, written projects? Um, this could be a portfolio of a number of smaller projects, but it might be, um, you know, an individual assignment of a couple of thousand words. Uh, we do have some group work on various courses, so we're trying to create a balance of, um, of assessment types throughout the programme as much as we can. Yeah, and, and generally, I think that in the liberal arts system that the, the assessment methods are um, yeah, are, are perhaps a bit more varied that they might be on some other more traditional UK courses where it would just be a few essays and, and exams. Yeah, so that's, yeah, just as a general, not rule, but yeah, so it's just as some general information. Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, do we have any other questions? <laughs> No. Okay. So yeah, so guys, you saw that um, Sabine's um, yeah email address is in the um, is in the chat there. So please do if you think of something later um, or tomorrow, um, then please do drop her a quick message, and she'll be happy to sort of get back to you. Um, I hope that you've got um, our addresses um, from the earlier presentation, and I'll just re-enter them here as well. Um, if there's no other questions for um, Sabine, then I think we'll move on to the next bit, which is um, from uh, my colleagues in the study abroad department, um, which I can see 
What about accommodation? Um, okay, Ryan, I can give you some information about accommodation there, but um, if there's nothing else for Sabine, um, thank you very much. And yeah, I'll speak to you soon. Yeah, thanks Adam. And yeah. goodbye everybody. Nice to have uh, able to meet <laughs> your names. <laughs> okay, all the best. Bye-bye. 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 Um, Rim, so sorry, um, yeah, let's just go back um, to just one second. Sorry, excuse me, guys. Um, just bear with me. PowerPoint presentation. So we do, we have guaranteed accommodation for all first year students at the um, at our Richmond campus. Um, Sorry, I'm just trying to show you um, something, but I can't, it's... Um... Is that um, the presentation? Because I hope you can see here, so... Um, yeah, there's a key point that I just wanted to highlight again to you guys. Um, so we have this campus, two campuses in London. The accommodation is in the main building here. So we have American dormitory style accommodation. So we have single rooms, twin rooms, um, or there's even some um, three person and four person rooms as well. Um, and it's traditional um, sort of US style. Um, all first year students would be based in this um, main building. Um, and then we have a canteen here as well, and you have like a meal plan included as part of the accommodation package. Um, so that would be cooked clusters living on campus. We also have some accommodation in this red house and this uh, Longley building here as well. Um, and a lot of our first year students will stay in there for, for that first year. Um, one key point just to mention about this um, is that we are probably going to be moving from this Richmond campus in 2022. Um, the, there's a sort of quite a strong plan in place. This hasn't been 100% confirmed and we should be releasing details over the summer. Um, but just to highlight that for those of you that did join us in September, um, yeah, we would only be based, potentially only be based at Richmond for a year. Um, before moving to another sort of more modern facility, also in the Richmond area, so it would be very near to this. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to highlight that um, for you. Um, now, um, I can see that my colleague Maggie is here as well. So Maggie, I don't know. Hi there. <laughs> um, there we and... go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you on campus? Yeah, I am actually. So, um, long story short, my Wi-Fi basically uh, just stopped working at home, so I came in this week. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, lovely, lovely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've, so guys, this next bit now, um, it's just um, Maggie's gonna. I know I touched on it a little bit in my um, presentation, but Maggie's just gonna highlight again, sort of how study abroad works a little bit um, here at Richmond and some of the opportunities we have around that. So this is the sort of an optional thing that we offer students um, or that we that we have and that students can take advantage of off um, while they're studying here. Yeah. Can you see my screen, Adam? Yeah. Can you maximize it? Do the uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, I can. We'll do that. Yeah. Slideshow. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Boom. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um should we wait or do you want me to get started? No, I think, yeah, no, no, we could. Please. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Hi everyone. I hope you've enjoyed Open Day so far. <laughs> um, my name is Maggie Burton and I work for the International Programs Office at Richmond and I'm here to talk to you about study abroad and exchange opportunities that are available through Richmond. And I was counting up our partners. We're quite active in um, in signing new partnerships. And we have 34 new par uh, partnerships in 22 different countries. So that is, that's massive. <laughs> um, so how does partnership exchange work? 
So basically, you can go on study abroad for a semester or for the full academic year, and um, you take courses while you're on study abroad that we work together with your academic advisor and registry services to make sure that those courses transfer back to your academic plan so it doesn't delay your graduation. <laughs> Um, so we typically suggest that students go in their second year or third year, so sophomore or junior, because um, a key point is fourth year 6,000 level courses cannot be transferred back from a partner institution. And we look for a GPA of 3.0 or B average to be admitted to the study abroad program. And what's really cool is it's a reciprocal exchange. So if you say study in our partner in New York, which is quite popular, um, you, a student from New York would come study with us in London, not necessarily the same semester, but it's still really a, such a cool program. Um, so where can you go on study abroad? Um, as I mentioned, we have 34 uh, partner institutions. So for Europe, we have several partners in France, Spain, Greece, Iceland, Germany, Switzerland. In the US, you can study in Los Angeles, New York City, Boston, Florida, Iowa, and actually just this week, we uh, signed a partnership with a university in Utah. Um, if you're interested in Asia or the Middle East, we have partners in China, Japan, South Korea, India, and Thailand, and the UAE, which again is another new partner. Um, and for South America, we have Argentina, Ecuador, Peru, Canada, Mexico, uh, Australia, and New Zealand. And you can find a whole list of our partners with the links to the specific universities on our website, um, which I'm sure we could uh, put in the chat if you want to investigate more. Um, so why should you study abroad? First of all, um, it really broadens your horizons and your employability. And um, in a survey of international employers, they they said that they really um, valued the cross-cultural skills and the flexibility that students and graduates with study abroad experience brought to, uh, brought, brought to the workplace. And the ability to work with teams of people from different backgrounds and different cultures. So it's, it's such a unique opportunity and probably most important, which I forgot to mention until now, is um, you pay tuition to Richmond. So you don't have to pay international stint fees. All you're responsible for for the semester or the year abroad is your flight and your accommodation at that partner institution. Um, and in closing, exchange isn't a year of your life, it's a life in a year. Um, I know I went through that rather quickly, but if, if there's any specific questions about uh, institutions or if you want me to go over how the exchange process works again, I'd be more than happy to do so. Yeah. So guys, we just wanted to give you, I know you've been here for, uh, yeah, for an hour and a good yeah hour and a half already for most of you so um just to give you sort of another yeah a bit more of an insight into exactly how how that works um and the other i think the other key point just to highlight is that um, you don't have to decide or know what you want to do now I want to just say so if some of these students join us in september maggie what would be the sort of process like how the time frames for that um so as um as i said if you're studying in September as a first year student, um, we typically don't send students until their second year. So you would, if you start uh, September 
2021, you'd be looking to earliest to study abroad in September 2022. So the, um, you'd submit an application for that in uh, February and we'd work together with you and your academic advisor and registry to just ensure that well before you get on a plane, <laughs> you know exactly what courses you're going to be taking and how those will transfer back to Richmond. Great, thanks. Um, and then there is a question here, um, someone asking about accommodation. Um, how do you sort of find it or how does it, how does that work? So if you're, if you're yeah, absolutely. Doing yeah. So um, depending on what, where you want to go, for instance, I know in the US a lot, I think, yeah, all of our partners have on-campus accommodation that exchange students uh, are required to take. So you'd be living on campus with other exchange students. Um, but for instance, our partner in Germany, they don't offer on-campus accommodation, so, but they do have um, services to help you find flats within that city. Yeah. So if that's more the experience you're looking for, um, definitely uh, our partners in Europe tend to have off-campus accommodation versus on-campus accommodation. Yeah. Um, and I think the other point to highlight around that, guys, is that um, yeah, any of the um, exchange partners will, they would assist you to find accommodation. So if, if they're... Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There'll be um, someone like me at that <laughs> um, partner institution who will, you'll be put in contact with and will help you every step of the way. Yeah. And then just in, and in terms of those of the accommodation costs, so there was just you know, a question asked, someone asking mm -hmm. about that. So you would need to pay for your own accommodation while you're on this, the exchange, but mm -hmm. you wouldn't be paying for any housing in London or at Richmond. So yeah. I think the way to think of it is just that your accommodation costs is transferred for the for the year. Exactly. Yeah. And depending yeah. on where you go, it could actually be cheaper because living yeah. in London versus... <laughs> living in, I don't know, South America somewhere. Yeah. 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 Um, and then, um, so um, someone asking, so because today we've had our fashion management and marketing degree talk, Maggie, um, mm. are there any particular partnerships that are um, in Paris around fashion or do we have um, any examples of um, fashion management um, We students? do have several business schools that, um, would uh, likely have fashion. Camille, um, my colleague Camille is the uh, the French expert. So yeah. um, what I can do is I can uh, get her to get in touch with you, Adam, but yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, yeah, just um, Yasmin, we have um, with these, we don't have partnership with a sort of fashion and design school in Paris, but mm. some of the business schools that we have partnerships there. We have fashion uh, courses. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think it would certainly be possible for you to do something in Paris if you wanted to, which obviously would be really great if that's if you're looking to get into to the fashion industry. Um, Fatima wants a partnership with the University in Chicago. Can we get one in the next year? <laughs> in the next year, that's a little difficult, but... Um, okay. But we are, as I said, we are developing uh, partnerships every couple months. So I'm, I won't say it won't ever happen. <laughs> yeah. um, so no, we don't. We don't currently have anything in Chicago, no. I'm afraid. Um, but as Maggie said, that's not to say we we, <laughs> we wouldn't or we won't one day. Yeah. Um, So yeah, guys, just going back to cost, the only real cost, I would say, you, so you've got to pay for your flights, there'll be maybe perhaps some cost around your visas, um, but I don't think that would be particularly ex expensive, and then your accommodation and living costs, but they're sort of transferred from Richmond to London. Yeah. Um, cool. Guys, is there any other questions about um, sort of study abroad? We just, I know that was quite sort of brief, but there's just, we just want to plant the sort of seed and let you know that this is an option open to you. Other UK universities do have study abroad partnerships. Um, 
particularly ones in London, but um, yeah, they're perhaps, yeah. So it's just something to be aware of. Um, and obviously for some of the EU students here, you know, you, you would have all heard of Erasmus. Um, and yeah, this, you know, study abroad is similar to Erasmus, not, not the same, but slightly similar, yeah. 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 Guys, if there's no more questions, we'll be looking to, to, to end. Um, if you do have anything else you want to ask or know, then um, please, um, yeah, please, please um, type, us, type it in the questions box and we'll, we'll, um, we'll answer you now. Um, Maggie, Maggie, is there a gen generic study abroad email address? Um, uh, no, so we yeah, don't yeah. actually That's have fine. A... If you guys just email us at inquiries. Um, yeah. You then can um, I will it pass on. that on to, to Maggie and to Camille and they'll be able to get back to you. Um, good question here asking, can you do multiple study abroads? Yes, you can actually. You can do up to a year. So you could go to one uh, partner for a semester and then go to another partner for another semester. But the most you can do is a year. Yeah. So yeah, one year would be two semesters in the in the American system. Um, but yeah, it's certainly possible to do. Yeah, and it's yeah, as Maggie said, a semester in one place and then a semester in another. Um, how, um, so question here asking how many applicants do you get on each course? Um, I presume you're talking about more generally, um, Emily, rather than just study abroad. Um, so. Um, as, Sorry, you, you say, Maggie. Uh, well, um, well, of course, this year was a little special. The past couple of year, or year and a bit have been due to COVID. Um, but we had about between 8 and 15 applications to study abroad. Um, yeah, this year it was obviously on the lower side, but hopefully yeah. things will pick up again. Yeah. once international travel is uh, comes back. <laughs> um, and then Emily, sort of more generally, so I've said here that sort of average class size is about 25 students at Richmond. Um, and you know, some of the, the more popular classes might have 30, 35, some of the, the less popular ones might only have sort of 15. Um, but, and then in terms of sort of applications, obviously we have, you know, there's maybe you get five applications for every one sort of enrollment. Um, yeah, it just depends a little bit each year on, on um, yeah, on sort of various demographics. Um, yeah. Um, and then just a question here, to sort of, does the study abroad year replace the internship year? Uh, no. no. And just, we don't have, our internships are for um, sort of between eight and 12 weeks, um, or maybe eight and 16 weeks. So it's, it's not a year long work placement. So you will have seen, particularly at other UK universities, um, that you can often do a four year course and you get what's called like a year in industry. Um, that's not something we offer, but the internships we do have are um, accredited and integrated into the degrees. So they're part of the program, which is similar to, to, to a year long internship. Um, but no, you would generally do a study abroad in your second or third year and to perhaps yeah. an internship at the end of your third year or in your final year. Yeah, if you're on a four-year program. Um, there's a question here about FAFSA and um, aid packages for applicants who use FAFSA. Um, I'm afraid I don't know the answer to that. Um, I have a colleague who is our, um, responsible for the US funding. Um, he has to answer to the US government when he uh, spends their money. Um, I will ask him to um, get in touch with you um, Fatima. Um, Adam, actually, I um, on our overseas part study partners webpage, um, Jason has gone through and indicated which partner um, will qualify for FAFSA. Oh, okay. Yeah, That's but checking with him for specifics. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, 
Um, so guys, I'll just give you a couple more minutes to answer any, to ask any more questions. Otherwise, we'll sort of be looking to end the um, yeah end the webinar, open day presentations. Um, I will be in, in touch with all of you just to, to send you some general information to send you this this um, presentations you've seen today. Um, so then, as, as I said, if you do think of anything um, today, tomorrow, at the weekend, then um, yeah, just drop us an email um, or reply to that email. Um, other thing I'd like to just highlight is that all our um, any students who are an applicant here, or if you do apply in the next um, three four weeks, we'll be having another sort of open day, what's called an applicant day, on Saturday the eighth of May, um, and that will be another chance to get more information, general information about the university, but also to have uh, what we call a taster lecture. So, um, for example. Um, one, Sabine or one of her colleagues will be giving a detailed sort of lecture about fashion management and marketing. Um, so they'll talk to you about sort of yeah retail or branding or merchandise and recreate an actual lesson. And that's a really great um, yeah a great opportunity to get more insight to meet some of the people that you'll be studying with to meet a few more of the academics. Um, and during that day, we'll also be giving you a bit more information about visas um, and. Um, yeah, the next steps for joining in September. Um, okay, guys, nothing else has come in. So I think, um, yeah, we'll, we'll be ending the uh, this session now. But thank you all for your time today. We really hope you found it um, informative and you um, found some good points to sort of think about when you're sort of comparing or deciding where to study, you know, it's really important you find an institution that's the right fit for you. So you've got to understand a little bit about the type of environment, the type of people, the type of place you want to be in. Um, and yeah, know a little bit about where, how you're going to, um, or the environment that you're going to do best in, that you're going to thrive in. Um, and that would be my sort of general advice. Um, but yeah, thank you all for attending and um, yeah, I'll be, be ending the, the, the talk now.